Hello, and welcome to this special edition of E-Cystic Fibrosis Review. I'm Peter Mogazel, and I'm joined today by Dr. Michael Boyle, who's an Associate Professor of Medicine at the Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, Maryland. We're at the 36th Annual European Cystic Fibrosis Society meeting in Lisbon, Portugal. Mike, thank you for joining me today. Peter, thank you for having me. I know you're presenting data on the recent trial of VX809 and I have a calf tour. Could you tell me exactly what VX809 is? Sure, VX809 and some other therapies like that are definitely a hot topic here at the mm -hmm. meeting. VX809 is a CFTR corrector. That is, it's a therapy designed specifically to address the underlying problem causing cystic fibrosis in the most common type of cystic mm -hmm. fibrosis. That is, those who carry a mutation called F508-DEL. If you recall that that type of cystic fibrosis the problem is that cystic uh, fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator, the CFTR mm -hmm. protein, doesn't make it up to the cell surface mm -hmm. so that the lungs have uh, problems with a decreased surface liquid layer. It's more thick mucus, more infection, all the classic things we see with cystic fibrosis. 809 is designed to fix the problem there in the folding, which leads to um, CFTR not making it up to the surface. So the study that we are reporting on here is part of a series of studies looking at 809 and trying to get that CFTR fixed to hopefully improve FEV1 and some of the other outcomes in uh, CF. And what was the design of the trial that you're going to be talking about here? All right, so we, uh, last year we reported some of the results um, from 809-102, um, the second cohort. In that uh, study, we are looking for the first time at some of the doses of the combination of 809 with Ivacaftor, that is a potentiator, something that actually makes the, uh, the chloride channel work better once it's up mm -hmm. at the surface. In cohort two, we were looking at different doses of those, and what we found for the first time was that FEV1 was improved in this most common type of cystic fibrosis. What we're presenting at these meetings um, involve cohort three. Cohort three is an additional part of this study, which helps us um, decide about the best doses for this. And specifically, rather than just looking at the 600 milligram once a day dose in combination with Ivacaftor, this was looking at 400 milligrams twice a day. Um, the exciting part is that we again saw a significant effect on FEV1 during the time period when 809, the Lumacaftor, and Ivacaftor were combined together and used to treat these patients. And what was the magnitude of the change you just saw in FEV1? Right, so it's a great question. So it depends a little bit on how you measure that, whether you measure it from the very beginning of the trial. What we tend to focus in on is during the combination period, the 809 and 770, or Lumacaftor, Ivacaftor combination, because that's the combination we're going to use in the phase three trials, the, the, the trials that are just now starting, which are going to help determine whether or not this is going to be a, a therapy that we're going to get. The size of effect, if you talk about it in terms of absolute FEV1, was about 6% improvement, uh, a relative change of maybe about 8% or more, um, and um, very consistent between cohort two and cohort three in terms of effect size. So you mentioned that there's a phase three trial going on. What's the um, plan for that, and what's the structure of that trial? Okay, so very good. So obviously the, we're doing all these initial phase mm -hmm. two studies specifically to be able to get to phase three. That's that trial when we can actually um, determine whether or not this is an approvable drug. Um, so there's actually two separate studies going on which look very similar, both of which use the 809 in combination um, with Ivacaftor. Those um, are actually already started, um, 809103 and 809104. Mm -hmm. And these use the same doses, either a 400 milligrams twice a day or a 600 milligrams once a day of the 809 in combination with the Ivacaftor and treat for six months. And really at the end of that six months, we're gonna be able to look at lung function, how frequently people are sick, and then determine whether or not this is gonna be a therapy for this most common type of cystic fibrosis. We anticipate that we'll be getting results for this in a year or so. And have you identified any safety concerns mm -hmm. up until this point? So that's a great question. So the answer is um, there's been nothing that we've uh, seen that has prevented us from going on to phase three. Now there's always a big difference between phase three and phase two because the numbers are a lot bigger. Um, in the phase two part, the safety looked pretty similar 
between, in general, between placebo and treatment. The one area that we are going to be keeping an eye on is that we saw in the, the I'm sorry, the cohort two study and cohort three study that when we used 809 alone, not in combination, but 809 alone, that there were some patients who had some chest tightness, but that was usually sort of self-limited, and we never, we did, we did not see that in combination therapy. Now the phase three study, these ongoing trials are using in combination therapy. So those are things that we're gonna be keeping an eye on. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, we're looking at uh, FEV1 effect and effect on other clinical outcomes. Uh, do you have some advice for clinicians about what to tell their patients? These are obviously um, drugs that are highly anticipated. What should people be telling their patients now about these therapies? Well, it's natural to be excited about some of these new therapies. and. Some of the initial data, both with 809 and 661, the other compound, both suggest that this combination of a corrector and a potentiator like ivercaftor um, has potential to really make an effect on FEV1 and improve FEV1. So, so everybody's excited about that. So I think one of the messages is, hey, for the first time we're really seeing that we may be able to have something that's a treatment for the most common type of CF. At the same time, we want to make sure that we realize this is still being tested. I think some people, because of the success of Ivacaftor, feel like this is a slam dunk. Mm -hmm. And this is still a clinical trial. And so what we've been telling our patients is it's an exciting time. We'd love for you to participate in the trial. We also realize this is a clinical trial. We still need more evidence both of efficacy and of safety before we're ready to start giving this as a therapy. No, and that makes a lot of sense. Uh, one other thing I wanted to ask you is uh, there are other correctors out there that are being tested, VX661, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, how does that relate to VX809? So it's a great question. Um, I think the, uh, maybe even a, a, another message besides just the excitement of 809 is that we know this is going to be an ongoing process. And this is probably the first step and what's going to be several steps to really getting the best therapy. So you mentioned that there's other th correctors, such as 661, and some other companies are working on other correctors as well. We think there's a good chance that over time we may use a combination of correctors mm -hmm. because these correctors can actually work synergistically together to increase the amount of CFTR that makes it to the cell surface, potentially to increase the amount of chloride transport, and then most importantly to, to even improve FVV1 and other clinical outcomes more. So you can envision a point where you would take multiple correctors that work in different places <laughs> within the cell to help traffic the F508 del CFTR. Absolutely. So. Um, what we're beginning to realize when we do studies with cells in the dish is that by using correctors from different classes or that have different mechanisms, we can actually improve the amount of CFTR trafficking in this most common type of F508-DEL. So um, 809 and 661 actually have the same type of mechanism, so it's unlikely we would use those two together. But either 809 or 661 and another one of the correctors that's coming along could actually work together and be additive and result in much better results than we're even seeing already. And thank you for joining me, Mike. Oh, you're welcome, Peter. It's been a pleasure. And thank you for joining me on this special edition of E-Cystic Fibrosis Review.